Hey, this is Presh Tullwalker. Here are two fun geometry problems. Problem one, start with the right triangle. Construct an inscribed square where two of its sides are along the two legs of the right triangle. Suppose this vertical distance is five and this horizontal distance is 20. The question is, what is the area of the square? Problem two, you have one triangle with sides A, B, and six, and an area equal to four. A second triangle has sides B, C, and six, and an area equal to five. A third triangle has sides D, A, and six, and an area equal to 13. A fourth triangle has sides C, D, and six. What is the area of this fourth triangle? I thank Nifty for the suggestion. Pause the video if you'd like to give these problems a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve these problems. Let's solve problem one. Here's one way you could solve it, and you could say this is a textbook solution. Suppose the square has a side length equal to x. Then this side is also equal to x. Now this upper triangle has exactly the same three angles as the entire triangle and this lower triangle. So this upper triangle is similar to this lower triangle. That means the ratio of corresponding sides is the same between these two triangles. So x divided by 20 is equal to 5 divided by x. Cross multiplying gives x squared is equal to 5 times 20, which equals 100. But x squared is exactly the area of the square. So the square has an area that's equal to 100. So that's one way to solve the problem. But here's a fun way that involves outside the box thinking. First, construct a parallel line to the bottom side, and then construct a parallel line to the left side. We can then form a rectangle. Now, if we just look at this rectangle, it's divided into two equal triangles. So these two triangles have the same area. Now, what happens when we put this square here? Let's extend this horizontal line, and let's extend this vertical line. Now in the upper left corner, these two triangles are obviously equal to each other. They have the same height and the same width. The same thing goes for the lower two triangles. They're congruent to each other, so they have exactly the same area. So if we take the two large triangles and we subtract out equal triangles, the areas that remain must be equal to each other. So the area of the square must be equal to the area of this rectangle. So these two areas are exactly equal to each other. But how does that help us solve the problem? Well, what's the area of this green rectangle? We know that its width is equal to 20 and its height is equal to five. So the area of the green rectangle is equal to 20 times five, which equals 100. Therefore, the area of the square is also equal to 100. Wow. Now let's solve problem two. At first, it was not obvious to me how to solve the problem. On my very first attempt, I thought about using Heron's formula. So let's take the first triangle. We'll calculate its semi-perimeter, and then we will set this formula for the area and we'll set it equal to four. So I did this for each of the three triangles whose side lengths and areas are known. But it didn't go anywhere. I wrote out all these equations and I couldn't figure out any way that it would translate into figuring out the area of the fourth triangle. So I had to scratch this whole approach. Then an idea came into my mind. What about rearranging the areas of the triangles? I couldn't immediately justify all the steps, so I needed some help, which I posted to on Math Stack Exchange. 
But then I was able to figure it out. So think about a square with a side length equal to six, and you could actually create triangles inside. But we need to justify that this construction is possible. So let's see how this works. First, let's ignore this fourth triangle. Now let's just look at these three triangles. From the triangle D, A, and six, and the triangle A, B, and six, let's line up the two sides that have a side length equal to A. Now let's just clean up these labels so they're easier to read. Now let's line up the side lengths that are equal to B. Again, let's clean up these labels so that it's all easier to read. So now we're going in the right direction, but we still can't conclude that if we connect the last two vertices, we'll actually get the triangle with sides C, D, and six. We need to justify this last side is equal to six. So let's do that. So in order to do that, we will construct the heights of the two triangles that are vertical. So first let's construct this height and let's call it equal to H. The triangle's area is equal to five and that is exactly equal to six times H divided by two. Solving this equation for H gives H is equal to five over three. Construct a height of this other triangle and call its height equal to K. In this triangle, the area is equal to 13. So we have 6k divided by 2 is equal to 13. This means k is equal to 13 over 3. If we add h and k, we get 18 over 3, which is exactly equal to 6. So we figured out that the two lines that are horizontal, that are 6, also have a vertical distance of 6 between them, and they're parallel. And this means we can construct this length and we know that it must be equal to six. So we finally have our triangle here with sides C, D, and six. Its area will be equal to the area of the square minus the area of the three triangles whose areas we know. This is equal to six squared minus five minus four minus 13. And that gives us the area of the triangle is equal to 14. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.